this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video on Leon Lee's Unifan AL120. These are daisy chainable RGB fans from Leon Lee. 120 mil fans with a really nice overall aesthetic. Now, I previously unboxed and reviewed Leon Lee's SL120 fans and thought they were fantastic. So Leon Lee recently reached out to me and asked me to look at the AL120s and I am going to do a separate video to compare the two because they are different in certain ways. The main way is that they have changed the overall aesthetic of them. These are more visually pleasing on the rear. As you can see here, they have a slightly different structure to them and I'll show you a bit more of a comparison shot later on. And they have better RGB lighting, so they have more RGB lighting zones, but there are a number of other changes as well. Overall, however, the main setup is basically the same. These are 120 mil fans and they have a speed of between 800 and 1900 RPM. They have an airflow rate of 64 CFM and a static pressure of 2.62 millimeters and a max noise level of 28 decibels. So they actually run nice and quiet, but can also ramp up and keep things cool. Now I've been running SL120s in my case for quite some time and I've swapped to the AL120s and there's no difference in the fan speed but they are equally as quiet and they do run nice and quietly but the joy of these things is the installation process so I'm going to show you the setup and installation of them now. You can purchase them in single packs or in triple packs. If you're going to set up multiple of them, I'd recommend getting a triple pack, at least one triple pack in them. As you can see, I have a number in my case. I actually have 10 in my current setup, but one triple pack with that control box is enough to set that many up. And I'll talk to you about why that is a bit later on. But basically the triple pack gives you the little control box that is required to plug into your motherboard in a number of ways. There are a number of cables included in the box as well as obviously a SATA power connection, the RGB connections, and then another connection that allows you to connect it up to the motherboard nice and easily. And I'm going to show you the setup and installation process for these because it might look intimidating to start with, but actually these are some of the easiest fans I've ever had that joy to install. And that's because of the daisy chain setup. So they click together and stick together really easily and then they just connect into the single control box. So this control box here is able to control up to 16 fans in groups of up to four. So you can have four per connector and you'll see there's two connectors on each slot. So you have four different potential inputs with two on each and one for power and one for RGB. But what happens is you only actually have one connector for the fans. So if you were using a single fan, you'd use this connector that you can see now. It has one connector that connects to the fan and then has two cables come out of it, one for power, one for RGB. Pretty straightforward. For most RGB fans, you'd have two cables like that. But the difference with these fans is that they slot together. They click in place together with one another and you can basically connect up to four. As I said, I have mine set up in groups of three simply because of the size of my case. It only takes three, but if you have a tower, for example, a full tower case, you could connect four of them up. And the process for doing so is really straightforward. Now, out of the box, you'll see the difference in the design. Obviously on the front, which is where the air is gonna get sucked through, you have the Lee and Lee logo and the overall design. And on the rear, you have the supporting brackets. You'll notice some nice silver accents on the top and obviously has anti-vibration mounts around the screw holes. The overall, really nice looking fan. These things, obviously, as you've seen at the beginning of this video, look even better once they're plugged in and running. And the RGB lighting is actually magnificent. And they've improved on the SL120s, which already had some fairly decent RGB lighting, but now it's even more improved. And that's because you have lighting not only on the fan itself, but on the outer edges of it. And it's really subtle, but also very well done and quite bright and customizable in a multitude of ways. There's loads of different effects and visuals that you can get on it. So here you can see now we've got everything out of the box as it is in a triple pack. You'll notice there's actually three connectors for each fan that are included in a triple pack, but you don't need them if you're going to be connecting these fans together like as a group of three. You only need one connector per that group to then plug into the control box. So it becomes very, very easy. Also means there's a lot less cables to deal with once you've gone through the installation process, which makes this a breeze. Now I was taking the SL120s out of my case and replacing them with the AL120s. And so I already knew how to set this up. 
But in case you aren't aware, you, I'll show you the process for it now. You'll see that on each side of the van, you essentially have a clip that holds it in place. And you can't install them the wrong way around because of the way the clip's designed, there's pins on one side and then there's these flat contact areas on the other and then they just basically slot into place and you'll see there's a couple of clips at the top and the bottom you slot them in they just push them into place and that's clipped in place there and then they're, they're held together in that way obviously they're then screwed into your case whether that's into a fan tray directly into the case or onto a radiator on a cooler for example and the screws for that are supplied for an installation in that way but because they're also held in place it makes the installation process really easy because you don't have to screw each one individually in and try and deal with that the control box has been upgraded this is specifically marked as for the AL it is the same sort of setup as previously though so as I said earlier you have two connectors per group of fans or per single fan so if you're using a single one then that will go into there and there's four in total of that and that can hold up to 16 in a group of four that then has a really simple connection because it basically has a USB connection into your motherboard so you need a USB header on the bottom of your motherboard to connect that up and I'll show you the setup process for that a bit later on so the single connector in the same way that the fans connect to one another the connector with the power and RGB cable slots in again on those same pins and just needs to be pushed into place until it clicks and you can see the same sort of logic here has the pins sticking out and then the flat edge and that just pops in and is then held in place really easily a little bit fiddly and you do need to make sure you push it on until it clicks and then that's steadily in place but then you only have two cables to deal with now normally with a group of three rgb fans you'd have two cables per fan so you'd end up with six cables that you've then got to deal with at the end so you can already see that this makes things a lot easier you then just need to find and plug in the right one you can see that the power goes in one the other rgb connector goes in a certain way that then is held in place with a clip but very simple uh, easy to do and basic controls of it basically allow you to plug it into your motherboard and then use your software which i'll leave a link to in the description to control it and i'll show you that software later on because it's really straightforward the other thing you get is the sata power connector so that plugs into the control box and then obviously connects to your power supply units so the flat sata power needs obviously power for that to then power the fans so this is then able to power all the fans and to give all the rgb to it so you don't need to worry about powering them individually or anything like that it makes the process of setting these up really easy so now i've essentially got that going now for quick comparison's sake on the bottom here i have three sl120s which is the fan before this the previous connecting fans and then obviously you can see the difference between the sl120s and the al120s what they've done is they've improved the rear so previously you had this sort of black sticker on the rear and a slightly different design now you have a much nicer looking both front and rear they've gone for now you've got a white anti-vibration mount instead of the gray one you have a similar sort of aesthetic on the front but they've changed the rgb lighting zones and i'll show you a bit more of what that means in a minute there's also some design changes in terms of like the edging you can see the silver edging doesn't jut out as much now so ever so slight design differences but the AO120 is definitely the better looking of the two even more so when you've got it plugged in and running and the RGB has certainly been improved although it is different because now you no longer have it around the edges in such a large way it's more central and it's difficult to explain that without showing it so I'll show you what I mean in a minute but the setup is essentially the same process if you're already familiar with the SL120s then the AO120s is dead easy to install and there's a lot to be said for the daisy chaining of this because if you have a limited space in your case for cables and power cables and connectors then obviously this minimizes that because you don't have as many cables to deal with once you connect all those fans together but you can obviously run a single fan in there as well so i've got three groups of three and then one single fan as you'll see at the end now here i'm just going to show you again the comparison to the so 120 to start with and then the AL120s. You see the SL120s has a more RGB zone around the outer edge. Now you only have little accents in each corner and then the RGB is more in the center. So you get a lot more RGB from the fan. There's a lot more RGB overall, but far less at the very edge of it. But I think it has a much cleaner aesthetic to it now. Actually is more convincing. In this video, you can see a bit of a hot spot, for example, on the SL120s. That doesn't show as much up in real life as it does on video. 
but there's some really nice aesthetic coming off of this it also means that you have two separate zones that you can control within the software and i'll show you that in a minute which basically means that you have the ability to customize the look and feel a bit more but as i was saying earlier these are also quiet fans they run nice and quietly you can put some set them into 800 rpm as a low quiet mode and obviously ramp them up as you need to they're pwm controllable so if you plug them into the right system header on your motherboard you can control them with your motherboard software or you can control them with an lian lee's software as well the l connect software which has also been improved and is a lot easier to use now and more satisfying as well but the aesthetic is one of the main differences because I have, for example, a lot of intake fans in my case. Usually that means you have to have the back facing inwards, which takes away from the RGB and leaves you with horrible stickers on the rear. Now you have this nice silver backed sticker on there with a very nice effect on it. And so a much nicer overall look and feel to your case as well. But you can see the difference what I was talking about with the edge lighting. So the SL120 had more sort of RGB at the very edges of it, whereas the AL120 doesn't. Now, obviously it's worth talking about what happens with single fans. So if you buy a pack with just one fan in it, what you get? You obviously get the fan itself. You also have the connector with the power and the RGB connector on it. You get the screws and you get the little manual that talks you through the setup and installation process but you don't have any control box so if you buy these fans individually you're going to be stuck so if you buy 10 individual fans you have no control box to plug them into which will then become a problem so make sure if you're purchasing these that you buy a, at least one triple pack if you're going to install a load of fans in there because you'll need that controller but again, the setup process is the same with these single fans that will then fit together. So Lian Lee was kind enough to send me 10 fans for this build so I could show you the process of doing it. I use one triple pack and one area and then the rest of them were individual fans sent separately. So I'm clicking these three together. They are now going to mount to the bottom fan tray in my Dynamic XL case, which I've done a video on separately if you want to watch that. So I'm just going to make sure that the installation is done so that they are intaking correctly. What you also need to do is obviously think about the direction where the cables are going to face because you can only connect the little connector that comes with the fans to one side because of the way it's set up. The fans also click together in one direction and the connector also only clips on in that same direction so you need to make sure that it's going to be in the right way around don't install the fans then discover that you haven't got the connector on in a way where you're going to be able to reach the cables to the back of the case so in this case for example i'm installing it so those cables end up on the right hand side and then they'll fit and go into the back where i'll then have the control box obviously so then i'm setting it onto the fan tray with that logic in mind and then screwing it down with the basis that it will then be upside down it'll be pulling cold air in from the bottom of my case into the case and obviously giving me a nice bit of intake so this is how you would set that up with the fans facing upward screw the fans into the fan tray then when i go to install it it'll be the other way around the cables will be on the right and they will be easy to connect at the rear. You do get plenty of length in them to be able to do that too. And so now the fan tray is clicked into place and you can see it's already a lot cleaner and you can run the same sort of process on the top. So here I am installing three at the top. They've again been collected together and you have more than enough screws to be able to screw them in all included in the box with the fans as well so once they're all in place you can then just run the cables to the back with ease so talk about the connections to your motherboard there's another cable here that plugs into the control box which has a very tiny little plug on it you connect that in and then the other end of that has two connections on it one is for rgb header if you have an rgb header on your motherboard plugging that into there then allows you to control the rgb lighting through your motherboard's software so in my case msi dragon center or msi center as they've updated it to now and you plug that in there and there's instructions on which one to use because sometimes you'll find you have different voltages on that make sure you pay attention to the instructions that are included and it shows you where to install it in my case i am setting it up so that i'm plugging it into the system fan header so one the power connection goes into the system fan header on the top 
That can then be controlled. So when you go into the BIOS settings, you can set your PWM controls so you control the fan speed through your motherboard software. And then J Rainbow 2 on the top right hand side there is for the RGB connection. So you don't necessarily need those. You can just use the USB connection, then use the Lian Lee Control Center software to control the speed and the RGB lighting. But if you want full control through your motherboard, and setting it up that way and making sure you have the, the perfect setup and that's what you need to do so we plug in all the fans in we plug the control box into the usb header on the motherboard system fan connection on your motherboard and the j rainbow connection as well rgb header on the motherboard too and so now i am setting this control box at the back and you can see really straightforward and not a mass of cables so you don't have to deal with anywhere near as many as you would with other setups for example i've just built the Corsair 7000D airflow with 12 fans in it and that was a lot more complicated. I required two RGB control boxes, a Commander Pro and a Commander Core, so a multitude of control boxes and a whole lot of fan cables because there was two cables per fan, whereas this there is only two cables per connector and so I only have eight total which is a lot easier to manage or four pairs of two. You then have a sticky back sticker that you can then attach to the back of that control box, which then allows you to seat it wherever you want at the rear. And so I'm just installing it here where there's space. So a really straightforward setup, as you can see, I've got everything plugged in now and it's ready to go. And then once you power it on, obviously you need to plug in the power to be able to do that. So the SATA power connection and the USB connection, make sure you have that USB plugged into the USB header at the bottom of your motherboard and the SATA power plugged into the power supply unit. That then will ensure that you have full control of it. When you turn it on, you will naturally get a rainbow effect, but you can then quickly go into the software to change and customize that. And they've updated the software too. So I'm going to show you what that means and what you can do with it as well. So running those cables through, as I showed you a minute ago, make sure you plug them in at the top, the system fan header and RGB connections and the USB connection. And then when you power it on, you'll see this effect and you can already see that it looks really nice as a, a really nice glow to it. And you'll note both the inner and outer glows on the fans, whichever way around they are, they have a really good look to them. You can see these ones all set to intake. The back of them looks a lot nicer than the SL120s did. It really just sets off the build and finishes it off nicely. The sort of cables are minimized and obviously you've lost what was previously just a collection of black stickers on the back, which didn't look very nice. Now it's much improved in my mind. So now I'm gonna dive into the software and show you what you can do with that and the effects on the fans too. Here we are within Lian Lee's Elconnect software. This is an updated version specifically for the AL120 that allows you to control fan speed and RGB lighting. You'll also note there are a number of other settings, for example, down the bottom left, there's a motherboard sync. And in the settings itself, you can also click to set it to auto run on boot, which is important because historically Elconnect, the previous version, was a bit of a faff because you had to launch it every time you launched Windows or it would reset your RGB lighting, which was a real pain. Now under the fan mode control, you can select for a number of options, including PWM, quiet, high speed, full speed, and manual speed. Full speed obviously ramps up to the maximum 1,900 RPM. PWM requires that connection system fan header and then requires you to go into the BIOS settings and set your system fans to PWN mode, which will then allow you to control the fan speed via your motherboard software and customize it that way. So it gives you a lot more controls directly from one piece of software. If you like to control everything from your motherboard, that's the way forward. I really like to use Lee and Lee software because it's really easy to do. You can quickly and easily switch them on the fly and I have to have this running constantly anyway, so I can change the RGB line if I want to. But you can also see there's a motherboard software sync button down the bottom left. Now I'm going to go into the RGB line because that's the most interesting bit of it. As I said, with these fans, you actually have two zones. You have the inner bit, which is essentially the ring around 
the fan center, which then goes out into the fan blades themselves. And then you have the outer, which is essentially the four corners around the very outer edge near where it screws in. You see, you can select a color, a static color for the center, as I've done here, and I've set it to white, and now I'm gonna change it to green and apply that to all. That is essentially changing all the fans on there that are connected to it to green in the center. And you'll see they have purple on the outer corners at the moment bit hard to put across in a video so I'm going to change to a number of colors so you can see the differences here but it means that you can customize each of those sections and you can also do that on a, a fan by fan basis as well so there's a lot more customization in the AL120s than there was in the SL120s and you can select from a number of different colors down here and you can apply individually and you can see you can adjust the brightness too you can apply it individually or you can apply it to all of the fans that are connected and you can also go through each of the control boxes so obviously with the control box you have four connectors on it as i said that's the groups of fans that you have connected here so you can see i have four groups registered within the l connect software and then you can choose from a number of different settings i should warn you before i go any further this is going to get very stroby so if you suffer with photosensitive epilepsy you might want to stop the video or skip to the end because some of these rgb lighting effects are very intense and very bright if you're having a party in your room you could probably use your pc to give you some nice effects for that because there's some really bonkers very fast ones you can adjust the speed of them but by default they're pretty intense and very flashy i think i don't really know what the purpose of these some of these are because for me, certainly, they'll be far too distracting to have on your desk constantly flashing while you're playing or working. I like to set my fans to one color and just have it as that. But what you can see is a nice range of different effects under LED mode. There's loads of different effects that either happen on all the fans or go in a sequence through them. So if you set them up in the software and in the control box correctly in the order you've sort of installed them in the case, you can make those effects pass from one group of fans to the next and create some really nice visuals here. It's also worth noting sometimes when you switch between the LED modes, it doesn't select all the fans. You'll notice, for example, that when I did this, some of them were dark, but that's just because they weren't pre-selected in the LED drop down, and therefore they weren't showing the RGB lighting effect when others weren't. But it goes to show that you can set in those groups to choose on a fan by fan basis. So you can really customize the look and feel of it. And the RGB lighting effects on here are some of the best that I've seen on fans. Despite the fact there's only essentially two zones, it's done really well. And you can also see both intake and exhaust look very similar. So the top ones are obviously exhaust with the front facing inwards, which is where you'd normally get the best RGB on most RGB fans. And yet the ones that you're still looking directly at, which are facing the back of the case, they're actually sucking cold air in. You still get some fantastic RGB out of those as well. So the end result is a really nice looking setup and some very nice visuals that you can control. There is a note where it warns you about putting the fans on maximum brightness and white because that can cause problems with power. So... This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video on the Lian Li AL120 fans useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Be sure to check out the links in the description for more information, as well as the full specifications and where to purchase. I'd like to take a moment to give a shout out to my extra special YouTube members, those people that have clicked the join button to support my channel and help me to keep creating more and more content like this. That's the meaty keyboard, raw, Jay Shank. 007, Sir Spawns a Lot, Jeffrey Johnson, Kraken, Tortoise, Beast of Bunny, Moist Kebab, and potentially you. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great life. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.